found this bow tie in retro 8-bit style on Thingiverse, but the original model had no LEDs. That's why I upgraded them myself to have the perfect Kinewell disguise. In this video I show you how I proceeded. The original model was shared by user Robokit on Thingiverse and he suggested that you can also use it as a hair bow. The control of the LEDs should be as energy saving as possible because I wanted a small coin cell to last as many hours as possible. That's why I started to work with an 80 tiny 85 for the first time. There are numerous variants of the 80 tiny. They differ in in speed, memory and number of GPIOs. They are all very energy saving but also not as powerful as for example an Arduino or ESP32. The AT Tiny can be programmed with the Arduino IDE. You can find many tutorials in the web or on YouTube how to program it with a USB programmer or an Arduino. For the first test run I connected one of the GPIOs with the LED and resistor. By the way here you can see the that it is much smaller than a Wemos D1 Mini. When the LED is on, the whole setup requires about 7.6 milliamps of current. When the LED is off, it's only about 1.3 milliamps. So the AT Tiny is actually the ideal base for my little project. Of course I prefer to use SMD LEDs and since the coin cell battery is 3 volts I need an 82 ohm resistor also in 0805 SMD style. As wiring I choose fine enameled copper wire. Soldering is very fiddly, especially because there is no PCB to solder the SMDs to. First I tin the ends of the LED and then I connect the LED directly to the 82 ohm resistor. As so often I use reusable adhesive again to fix the build temporarily. This time I use enameled copper wire with only 0.15 mm diameter. Please do not forget to remove the animal before. This can be done by heating or mechanically with a pocket knife. The enameled copper wire is soldered to the two open ends and voila! I have the finished LED including resistor and wire. As a first test run I connect the LED directly to the battery. And it's always a pleasure when a LED lights up. Since the original model came without LEDs, I remodeled it in FreeCAD and added small tunnels and openings to accommodate the LEDs. You can download the remix of the model on printables, the link is in the show notes. Afterwards I processed the SCL files with SuperSlicer. Here you can see again the openings for the LEDs. The cables are inserted here in the picture from the right and the LEDs find place in the rectangular openings. SuperSlicer has a special feature in the slice preview menu that you can insert a g-code at the desired position which pauses the printing. This is what should happen at this point. The print should be paused so that the LEDs can be installed together with the cabling and then the print can be resumed. After the actual slicing you can see the print at the interrupted point in two different colors. This is because the function can also be used to change filament or color at a certain layer. I did the same for the central part of the bow tie. There are openings here as well. In the lower part a larger opening for the AT Tiny. Through the holes the cable can be led to the LEDs which find place in the upper part of the housing. And again the G-code has to be inserted at the appropriate place to pause the printing so that the LEDs can be installed. This is what it looks like on my 3D printer which has already printed the lower part and is pausing. I have already fiddle the LEDs into the openings with the cables. And now I press resume printing and the print continues. The LEDs are thus firmly integrated into the housing. On the left this is already the case and on the right the holes are currently still open. This is what the first layer above the openings look like. And it is quite similar with the central part. 
The code that runs on the ATtiny is quite simple. The ATtiny can be programmed with the Arduino IDE. And basically, I used a very simple blink sketch and the free legs of the ATtiny to randomly turn the LEDs on and off in pairs. Here is the first test with the first component. The ATtiny is only connected to power and one LED here. In the next step, I connected all other LEDs. I had to shorten the legs of the ATtiny a bit and bend them to fit into the tight case. I also connected the enameled copper wire to the holder for the CR2032 button cell battery which is attached to a rubber band together with the holder. And this is how the finished 8-bit LED bow tie looks like. Satisfied I notice that the LEDs still weakly blink even after more than 12 hours.